Welcome to Paintbrush and Ivories, the podcast for artists and curious creatives that connects creativity with the heart and soul. I'm Michelle Walker, and I'm here with one of my gorgeous creative soul sisters, Jude White. Hi, Jude. Hi, Michelle. It's so exciting to have you back. And you were on our episode number 43 with Jen and I when we were talking about Ash Mud and Tears. I'm delighted to get you back into the conversation about the exhibition and what we've learnt. So welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Excited to be here. For those if you're listening and you haven't heard episode number 43, let me just let you know that Jude's uh, also a Northern New South Wales artist here in Australia who's had a long-term arts practice working in textiles, painting, and she also has a significant part of her practice is working in remote Indigenous communities to create textile designs. So that's a little bit of Jude's story. There's a lot more to it, but we will explore a bit more. So Jude, heavy sigh. The Ash Martin Tears exhibition is done. We've celebrated. Let's talk about what it meant and what we've learned. Sounds great. So part of an artist's practice is reflection. So this is going to be a bit of a documented reflection. What do you do in reflection once you've done a body of work or what have you done for this particular one, the actual practice of your reflection before we get into what your reflections have been? First of all, I do a lot of tidying up, going down into the studio and tidying up what all the half-started things and you know, seeing what's left over and what I can keep working on. That's one part of the reflection. I do a lot of journaling. So I write things down, thinking about what I loved, what I would do differently next time, looking at all the pictures, updating my website, mm -hmm. <laughs> practical things as well. Yeah, I mean, also it just bubbles away inside. Sometimes it's just a quiet inner process and not necessarily a, um, a mental Hmm. intellectual process it's just something that and I trust that I trust that that inner other intelligence that is bubbling away inside and giving that space to evolve and, and let itself be revealed mm. wonderful so let me ask you what are your reflections of the Ash Mud and Tears exhibition it was a fantastic experience I'm really really grateful so glad I didn't collapse into my moments of terror and self-doubt. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't. You know, there's, just, there's a lot of inner voices sometimes to get over, the inner, you know, fraud, the, you know, I can't do this. Uh, notice them and keep moving forward. I feel like what it really did for me was it really helped me resolve a whole lot of loose ends in my practice of doing so many different mediums, using doing painting and textiles and bit of printmaking and just I was just had so much going on it really helped me resolve what my passion was and what really brings me joy and once I got on that train that all just unfolded really easily mm. and what was the answer yeah, to the question really actually love textiles I love large scale work and with textiles and fabric you can go large scale also that I know how to do that and I can do that and I'm great at and that. And you're really so good at it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, easy. it's like I've got this in my back pocket. I can just pull it out and it, and I can combine it with all the other um, knowledge I know that actually I know how to do composition. I know how to do all these things. So somehow uh, being on the track to doing the exhibition, it kind of concretizes all that and and you kind of do it and you go, oh, actually, this is fine. I, I, I know how to do all these things. And once you get over that hump, it was really fun. It was actually really exciting. And I just couldn't keep away from keeping on going. You know, you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking about, how am I going to do that bit? And you come up with the answer. Yeah. So that's one of my reflections. I'm going to get lots more, you know, having creating a structure. Exhibitions really help you create a structure. The support of the gallery, uh, the support of you as my um, co-exhibitor, um, it really developed my practice and my discipline to actually do the work and get into the studio every day, something that I'm really easily distracted by every other thing in my life. And mm. so it's like when you've got a deadline for me, when I have a deadline, I have to prioritise getting that done. And part of the thing that's driving that is being accountable like being accountable to myself, being accountable to you as my co 
exhibitor to the gallery and just wanting it to be really fantastic and show what I can do. So that's a really great thing about the exhibition for me. Mm. What are some of your reflections? My big standout one is that I was enormously proud of the work, Mm. our collective work, my personal contribution, and I was incredibly grateful for the whole experience. That was sort of what bubbled to the surface. And one of the things I really got to experience and it came through with a conversation with another artist, I loved the eight-week period. It was so generous and expansive and luxurious almost because we got to do lots of things. The work that went into the exhibition really juice it for all it's worth. And the other artist that I was chatting to is a painter friend of mine and he said he had a a show that was happening in Brisbane. I said, oh, what's the dates? You know, I'll see if I can get up. It was like four days. And I went, oh, I really want to see it, but there's no way I can make it on those four days. So it was just that acknowledgement of how rich that was, that time expanse. Did you feel that as well about the time frame? Yeah, absolutely. Like it was such a nice, warm feeling having done the work, having it hung and just knowing it's down there and people are getting to enjoy it. And then we could you know, do a lot more advertising that a lot more people know, get really good documentation of the work. And Mm. I keep comparing it to being like having my child in daycare. It's like our babies were down there and being very well taken care of by the Northern Rivers Community Gallery. Yeah. And then we had, you know, they had some workshops. We really kind of added value to the work. And I think it was just fantastic. And yeah, I'm thinking back to other shows and I think yeah, often they're, they're generally a lot shorter than that. Yeah, a week or two at the most. That was great timing, wasn't it, with the commemorative flood workshops that were being offered through the gallery and both of our works being relevant for that mm. particular project. So it was a side project, but the timing of our exhibition and the timing of that was perfect and then being able to run those workshops and then attend the community participants exhibition opening last weekend was also really lovely. And I think that built another audience into our work and connecting with us as artists. And a lot of them had creative practices and were artists themselves. Um, Some were not artists and just really dived in, but I thought that that was a fantastic collaboration, partly because the gallery saw the value in inviting us and the fact that we were able to run workshops that was in our back pocket, as you say. Yeah, and I felt that was a really heartwarming experience and it felt really wonderful to have the opportunity to connect with the general public who had Mm. really been impacted by the devastating floods and hear their stories and be a support person there to help them have some creative expression. So I felt really grateful to, I don't know, just to come down and really be with people through their process and their journey. Mm -hmm. And to be invited by the gallery to do that was just, I guess, a lovely piece of feedback. So you mentioned one of the things that in your reflections there about documenting, Let's talk about that because I think this is one of my big things from this exhibition. And one of the goals that I had personally for the exhibition work was to make sure I really got the most out of it. And documentation was a critical one. What were some of your things that you thought worked or worked well in that area? You know, I came into this a lot less experienced than you, Michelle. And I think I said to you earlier on, you I'm just trusting you. You tell me where I need to be. <laughs> What I need to wear. Do I need lipstick? Yeah, this time you need lipstick. (laughs) I got to make up or can I just come in my art clothes? So I was so grateful. We had the professional photo shoot, which I have never done ever. And I totally loved it. And by the end of it, I was so warmed up and it was, that was really great. Then we had this great uh, collection of fantastic photographs, which we could send out along with the press release. I love how you designed the postcard. You did such a great job. Thanks for that. And then got them printed and just all those extra things. It was really Mm. fantastic. And I learned a lot from you with all of that. So thank you for being my mentor in that department. What about you? What was your favourite bit? Well, I just want to say that I was also getting advice from other mentors of mine that, you know, helped feed some of that. And 
I want to say Nellie Lecomte was our photographer in Northern Rivers here. She's famous for her food photography and she teaches her on that front, but she also is an incredible photographer when it comes to personal professional branding. And she has such a connection with creatives and I truly enjoyed, like I had a ball, partly because Nellie is a friend that I haven't seen for a little while. So this particular shoot was also a chance for me to catch up with her. She does outstanding work. And I think when I think about the exhibition and the collaborations that emerged, I mean, yours and my collaboration was the primary one. Then the collaboration with the lovely staff at the gallery who were fantastic and the space itself was part of the collaboration. But then we had these other folk who helped us do the things that we wanted to do, like Nellie. And I thought that she was a critical player. And I feel that really we've got this amazing resource now with that photography. And it will be the gift that keeps on giving, as well as some of the recordings that we've done, the videos that we've done. I must admit, I did run headburst into technology, which has previously worked for me and didn't on the day. And I found that frustrating because I thought I had it sorted. But one of my learnings and one of the things I would do better next time is I would actually take, for example, the artist talk, which I very optimistically tried to record on my iPhone and thought the recording was okay when I listened back very briefly. But when I came to actually edit it, it was not good enough because the quality of audio for any kind of podcast is really critical. I would have taken that more seriously. And funnily enough, one of the ladies that I spoke to at the exhibition opening for the commemorative flood exhibition does live stream videoing. And you and I both know this woman. She was a participant in both our workshops and she said, Oh, ring me next time. I'll do that. I'll set that up. I have the camera. And I thought, yes, why didn't I do that? And I know why I know I was a bit reluctant to turn it into a, a bit more of a high scale thing, but I feel like there is a real importance in recording that because it, it was so beautifully run you know, Virginia's facilitation was fantastic. And I thought the flow between us, it captured a different aspect of our story and the work. And you told the detailed story of the making of your fabrics. And I told a bit more detail about some of the work that I did. And I think it was really valuable. So I think taking some of that documentation to the next level would be one of my learnings. What about you, Jude? What else would you think? Yeah. I just wanted to add to that about the artist talk, that in terms of getting maximum value out of our show, seeing if you can do things like artist talks, um, you know, really putting yourself out there, see what the gallery have on offer to support you to, to really keep adding value to the exhibition. And the thing about the artist talk for me was we were in the space, up close and personal to the work. We had like 80 people there really interested in what we were doing and it just felt like such a it was such a gift and it was a lot of fun but it was really wonderful to be able to reflect on the work when it was right there in front of us and you know talking about our different processes and then the people who were in the audience were able to ask questions and we were able to give a lot more detail so that was a really fantastic experience for me and yeah I, I, I hear you it's a Shame we didn't quite get a really good recording of that, but that's another learning. And you know, next time, hey, let's just get the big cameras rolling. <laughs> and one of the things and I will do is get a transcription of it. So there's a good chance I can do that, and I'll have that on my website for anyone who's interested because I would hate to not get something out of that artist talk. And I'm like you, Jude, I loved the artist talk experience, was really interesting for me where I had a lot of people who knew me well, like I even had family come down, but I had people who just met me through the work who came up afterwards and gave me some really profound feedback about how much more they came to appreciate the work, hearing the story and loved it even more. And I think, did you find that as well? Yeah, the feedback was wonderful. Like it was really confidence building when you get these people coming up and and, and it happened on so many levels there at the artist talk and even just bumping into people who'd been to the show and saying, Oh my God, I love it. It's so beautiful. And a friend of mine was at a workshop up in Mawulumba and she said that one of the participants in that workshop said, oh my God, I just got these most incredible textiles down in Ballina Gallery. That was Anne. And she was sort of silently excited that it was me. So just hearing all that feedback mm -hmm. and hearing how your work has touched people, 
yeah, it's just a, a really confidence building experience. That's such a critical part of the artist's practice is to make sure that we open ourselves to getting that feedback. I mean, even though ours was a collaboration, there's still the individual works were solo endeavours. And when we do put our work out there to give ourselves as many opportunities as possible to speak about the work, to have that recorded in some way for posterity, for use, it also helps not just describe your own work, but it helps give potential future showing venues an idea that you're taking it seriously and I think that that's really critical. No I agree Michelle for sure and the photography I think is really important and I'm so glad that you organized that and that we had the most amazing photographer Nelly. Yeah. Getting a really good collection of photographs of your work it's just a no-brainer when you spend months and months creating this work and finally it's hanging in all its glory in the most (laughs) beautiful space it's really being honoured, your work's being really honoured. And those photographs, that we can use them, like they'll be on our website, like we can use them to show other galleries. And I would say don't be shy at spending money on those um, the photographs. We spent money on uh, press releases for the local paper. We spent money on the postcards. But it's really money well spent. Yeah. Um, just go for it because you, those things, like you said, they're the gift that keeps giving. I loved everything that we did. It was, I could do more. We could do more. And that, that was good because I kind of reached a new learning edge around how to promote the work in future. What I did this time, I learned from the one two years ago where I didn't do nearly as, as enough, I don't think. And so I definitely feel that I was grateful that you were just happy to go along. <laughs> that worked really well. What else, if anything, do you feel like you would do differently, maybe with your own work or the aspects of your own practice or the exhibition itself, Jude? What else would you perhaps improve on? Um, Doing it again or even now, I'm already starting to think about what is my direction, what's next, and I would like to actually get a body of work together or start on a track before I apply for an exhibition. So when we did this show, we, I mean, we were kind of derailed because to change tack, you know, after we were on the flyer track and we had to change tack and include the flyer. So, you know, start making different work with different themes. Um, But I would really like to uh, make some work and get clear about what I'm doing before I apply for an exhibition spreading my wings a bit further, seeing where else is I'm out there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been looking at that little mentorship grant and thinking, yeah, I could really do with getting some support from some other artists who have, you know, forged the path before me. So um, I think, I, yeah, just going to the next level and being more organised and more prepared. Mm. It's funny that you say that because that's my mental thought, which is get some work together and then look for a possibility. But my side thought on that is what if I get started and I don't like it it's really interesting how I feel like I want to dive in and invest but I also have this reluctance to and it and it's just a bit of a shadow thought it's nothing very debilitating but it's just oh because I'm really good at just following a trail and I hadn't expected, you said that you got, you went back to your roots in a way I did as well. And that I went right back to my sculpture roots. And what emerged for me is my love of multiple materials. I love the combination of materials. I really want to pursue that. And that's come out for me as, okay, I really want to keep working in timber and paint and metal and maybe ceramic. You know, I'm not feeling precious about it but it's the combination of things and I feel less tight around the label of painter or you know I feel a little bit more expansive and embracing of different things so I feel like I've gone the other way you know from a previous exhibition solo which was all painting and a collaboration which was all painting to now going big and broad and see what what happens so I'm going to look fondly and listen intently to what unfolds for you Jude about this and reflect on it myself because I think that's also the pressure to go what's next and answer that question was was just in the winds you know I found 
people were asking the question and I was even asking it of myself and I didn't feel very pressured to answer it per se, but I love, I love a good soul stirring question. And what now is possible is a really good question for me to consider. And it might take me six months or 12 months even. And one of the things I did know that the timing for me right now, because I'm moving studios, I'm setting up studios. So all my jewelry and enameling, all my painting and collage work is all being packed up and moved that I just knew that I couldn't really think about what next until after I get settled at the other end. So there's a sort of a hiatus for me, which has worked out well. And maybe that will just allow more of the good gems to bubble up to the surface, as you say, because I do think that process works. And I do trust that what emerges will be exactly right. I'm totally with you on that one. And just trusting the process and letting it all unfold and being patient is a really good learning. Mm. One of the other things that's emerged more solidly for me is actually my love of a particular artist that I've always had a bit of a passion for. That's Rosalie Gascoigne. And that emerged after I was starting to play with the cutting up of the painted plywood. I rediscovered some of her work and it wasn't the stuff that really drew me in the first time I got engaged with her work about 10 years ago or more, 15 years ago. It's different work and I love it. Like I love her as an artist even more because of it. There's that aspect. And the other aspect of my practice, which has emerged is the practice of quilting. And I say that with a question mark in a way, because quilting isn't something I relate to normally. You're a textile artist and love fabric. I don't. I'm particularly useless with a a sewing needle, but There was something about the look of that work that I did, nothing's the same, the way pieces were put together, the fragmentation and the reconnection thing that I feel like I need to explore more about the history of quilting and the history of quilt making because I do love that it's traditionally a women's area and it's traditionally a collective art form and a storytelling form. And I'm not sure what that means for my practice, but it's interesting. It's just, I'm just letting you know, this is kind of emerged. It's one of the little bubbles that has emerged up, which I found very interesting. And I want to give a shout out to the story of art without men by Katie Hessel. Most people perhaps listening will know the great woman artists podcast by Katie and her book that came out this year. I kind of got re-emerged into quilting and tapestry and some of those art forms that I don't kind of lean into, but I think that they've got some relevance. And my mother was a great quilter. So, you know, of course that meant I, I went nowhere near it myself, but it's also been interesting to think of it as a visual uh, connection with the work that I'm doing, but I just happen to be working in timber and metal. So that's part of my little snippets of what's next. Oh, that sounds so exciting. (laughs) If you get into doing any quilting, I can throw (laughs) lots of fabrics your way. I have so much, so many different (laughs) fabrics. I've got bundles of them and I never seem to be able to part with them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think it'll be quilting in timber and metal for sure. It won't be be fabric and um, thread. (laughs) But also just kind of that thing you mentioned about, it's almost like it's been the invisible art form because of, you know, the patriarchy and the sexism. And then somehow it's not surprising that it's not something that we would have considered given mm. our enculturation. So I, that sounds really exciting that you're kind of going, oh, hang on a sec, there's this whole other world. Mm. Um, and just giving that some acknowledgement and some validation. I love it. And material is landscape and the idea of fragmentation. I think those things are going to continue to bubble have you got concepts or particular materials that you feel strongly about that you would like to pursue I haven't tidied up my studio by the way I just shut the door on it I'm just saying that out loud (laughs) I'm glad that you went and tidied yours because I did not it's taken many many goes I tell you I've still got stuff all over my back lawn and mud and I've still got mud on my front veranda yeah, so I'm really excited to continue on my exploration with uh, long lengths of fabric and silk, the botanical dyeing. I love the idea of potentially doing a whole collection of floor to ceiling mm. length silks that could be installed in such a way that people could walk between them because there's something so beautiful about silk. You know, the great thing about textiles and having them hanging is it, you know, I don't feel very precious about it. It's not like a 
a painting on the wall and you're not allowed to touch it. And it, I, I would really love to do something where people can actually have a key experience and because touch and just feeling fabric is such an important part of, I mean, every day we wear different fabrics. And so I'm excited about something like that. Mm. Um, I get really inspired by the Biennale of Sydney. Every couple of years I go down and I love seeing all these huge works that, you know, the intention is not to have them to be sold, but to really make some a statement, waken people's minds to what's going on in the world. And I find that really inspiring. Um, oh, I did think, I wonder how I apply for the Biennale. <laughs> Our horizons are getting ever expanded. I think that's the great thing. You just go, wow, there's no limits. Where can I go next? Mm. But the other thing I wanted to say was in terms of the themes of the work, because there's the work and the actual um, the, the practice and the medium, which you've talked about, Michelle. And then there's what do we want to talk about? And we were talking about the fires and the floods. And, yeah, I feel a little bit like I'm not sure, like, I, and I'm going to say this out loud and I'd be interested in your thinking, but it's like, oh, it's kind of like, oh, no, well, we can't keep doing that because it's going to become old or it's going to become used by or there's going to be another big thing. But there is still a part of me that would love to, it doesn't feel kind of quite finished. Mm -hmm. And I do have quite a bit of work that I started and I've got a bit of an inner conflict about that and maybe have a little bit of inner pressure I'm putting on myself. You know, not it's not taking over my life or I'm not thinking about it much, but it's like, well, well what am I going to talk about next? Like what's important to me? And, and is it okay to just keep kind of working with that theme and how, when do you know that you've done it? There's all those sort of questions that are bubbling around in my brain. I mean, what do you think? Are you? I had a very similar kind of thought pattern where I said, I, I think fires and floods was very specific. It was very timely and it was very focused. And for me, it brought up a couple of general issues, which I think could be extrapolated from the work and fragmentation for me is an important concept it's an important concept from an ecological point of view but also what happens in the community so I feel like a genericized issue has emerged for me and maybe there's something there for you that work that you've started and want to continue could fall within but without it specifically being fires 2019 floods 22 it could be something lifted up and that's you know, and I think, unfortunately, there's a world to explore around climate change events that are going to come and we're not going to be done with them. No, you're right, Michelle. And I already have touched on that because, as you know, I have had my own house fire where I did lose everything. And, yeah, I keep coming back to that kind of parallel with what happens as human beings with all the disruption and when our the ground underneath our feet is ripped out from underneath us through people dying or relationships breaking up or different mm. traumatic events it's kind of the journey of being human you know mm. and then going through that lo that loss and that grief and and identity I think that's a rich conversation that you and I will probably continue and I think maybe just in wrapping up it would be good if you've got any thoughts or advice to anyone who might be out there who's perhaps thinking about an exhibition from your learnings, Jude, what would you give or what would be some of your sort of final thoughts about this? Jump in, but keep in mind that, you know, you're also checking it out for yourself, whether it's going to work for you as you go along. Know that you can always change your mind. You can always say no as you're going along if it starts to not feel right on multiple levels, like the timing or who you're working with or the gallery. Just know that you kind of constantly being discerning and mm. you get to choose. But also be really careful not to collapse out of feelings that are maybe coming from old wounding, like feelings of self-doubt or fear, I'm a fraud. And, yeah. and I would suggest get a hand with that. Have a few allies up your sleeve that when you notice you're feeling like, oh, my goodness, who am I? Who do I think I am? You know, I can't do this, that you've got some allies that you can discharge some of those feelings with and, and come back to what is really real in, for the grown-up and see if you can keep going forward. 
and feel the feelings and do it anyway. Mm. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. My thought is about the collaboration and thinking really broadly about collaborations when you're in the journey of making the work and also in the exhibition phase because they're two very different phases. And you've just mentioned one collaborator or one support is that you want someone to have you back when you maybe you get a bit wobbly. If you do find you go through any feelings of wobbles, then you've got someone to work with. But also I think I would think very big and more boldly about some of the collaborators. And I think it's also really interesting, for example, to think as you're without getting too self-conscious is to think about some of your key signature pieces as you're making it document the making because there's nothing more interesting for people who are wanting to know more if they can see a behind the scenes making of you know this particular work especially if it's one of the ones where you've got a big deep story that I feel like I could have done a better job of that and it is something that really does serve you as an artist to be able to have some of those points of reference the other thing was you and I spent quite a number of times down at the gallery connecting with the space and being really comfortable in the space and I feel that if you're looking around for a gallery to approach then you have to love the space that they offer and that makes such a contribution to your artwork don't just go with someone because they're on the main street or don't just go to someone because they've got a big name, whatever. I think be really discerning, as you said, it's a great word, discerning about the space where you want to put your work. And maybe it's not inside a gallery. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's out in the park. Maybe, you know, this is where I think we can get more bold with our work. So lots of thoughts on the fly. Thank you, Jude. Thank you for joining me for this conversation today. You're welcome, Michelle. Thanks. It's it's always really nourishing and like what a great privilege just to hang out, to, to reflect and hang out. And I go, oh, yeah, actually, there's so many more things bubbling away. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity. And I hope that some of our experience can inspire yeah. some other artists to, to get out there and give it a go. And um, but, you know, really what a great thing to do. I I feel very lucky. Yeah. Really different place. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm extremely grateful to you for being my buddy and my art collaborator in this Ash Mud and Tears. I expect it be the gift that we'll keep on giving for some time. So thank you, Jude. Thanks, Michelle. (laughs) Thanks, everyone, for listening. Great to have you join us today for this conversation. Jude and I are talking about our exhibition, Ash, Mud and Tears, that was on recently at the Northern Rivers Community Gallery. As always, you can get in touch with us. Jude's connection, she's got a website that is... judewhite.com.au And I'm michellewalkerart.com. And on Instagram, I'm also michellewalkerart. And I'm judewhiteart. There we go. All right. Thanks, everyone. Lots of love. Till next time. Bye for now. Bye for now.